Okay. We have Trini here, and I'm very excited to finally catch up with her. And so based off of our conversations and an upcoming event, we're going to speak about being single and saved. So what comes to your mind <laughs> when I say single and saved, what thoughts do you have? Single and saved, what thoughts do I have? Just really, really being connected and committed totally to uh, God. That is exactly what I think about. I think about being whole, being filled with and being in tune with the word of God and just staying in tune and connected with him. That is what I think about because in him, there is fullness. In him, there is joy. In him, there is peace. And so you'll get, even when you're thirsty, it's like living water when you're spending time with God. And so that is what I get when I think about being single and satisfied being filled with everything from God. Okay, okay. I like that, that's, that's true. But based off of some conversations you and I have had, you know, it, it's some singles struggling and they yeah. save. And yeah. so for me, speaking about that with you, it seems that a lot of single saved individuals are trading. And when I say trading, we can know what God wants us to do, but there seems to be a gap between what we know God wants us to do and what we're doing. Have you seen that gap at work in single saved individuals' lives? Yes, I, I do. You speaking to her. Uh, it's, a, yeah, it's a daily struggle uh, being single. It's a daily struggle with staying on the course and knowing that God wants a, a single female like myself just to sit back and stay in position. You may be at the store and you may see this nice, handsome gentleman that you may just want to speak to. And it's OK to speak to. But it's 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 just like this being real on this call. We have to die to the flesh daily. OK. okay? when we see something that looks good to us and we want that, we have to die daily to the flesh. And when I say die daily to the flesh is when you get up in the morning and, in, and when you get up in the morning and when you're praying, you're saying, God allow me to die daily to my flesh. God allow me to stay in tune with what you want me to do. God allow me to just stay single and satisfied. And so that that comes for me with just spending a lot of time with God. Is it a struggle? Sometimes, yes, it is. But again, what helps me is I'll say to any single person is we have to just be real. And I'll say this, baby, embrace the season that you're in right now so that God can do everything that he has to do through you and for you. You have to embrace whether you're married. You have to embrace whether you're single. You have to embrace whether you're dating. You have to embrace that season that God has you in. Because when we talk about Ecclesiastics 3, what it says, in everything there is a season. So right now it's a season for me to be single. It may be a season for those to be married, but it may be a season for others to be dating. My season is being single and satisfied. Amen. Okay. okay. Before I dig off into that satisfied, because I, I, I hear that continue to reoccur, just want to speak about trade-offs. And when I say trade-offs, meaning there are individuals, whether they are male or female, who they have needs. And what that looks like is a woman may say, I just like to talk to a man. I just like to spend quality time with a man. I like the comfort of a man's presence. And that's from her perspective. But the only time she seems to get that is when there's sex involved. And without the sex, she can't get a man to pay attention. She can't get a man to compliment her in a fashion that is regular and sincere. And so that's a trade-off. And for a man, we like nice things. We like to speak to the opposite sex, but there seems to be a trade-off that I can't talk too long or get too close. Otherwise, all I think about is sex. So what are your thoughts on men and women trading off? 
uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just speak from, we don't want to do it, but we have found ourselves compromising for okay. female. Okay? okay. We have gotten situations where we really want to spend time with this gentleman. We don't want to have sex, but again, you, you guys are both mutually attracted to one another. And then you, you're trying to die daily to the flesh, but then he's, you fine. You, you're getting all these compliments that you want to hear. And so as a, as a woman, because I've been involved in trade-offs in the past. So I understand, you know, I'm not getting on here acting like I ain't never traded off because okay. yeah, I've been in situations where I did this for this. Okay. It was a trade, you know, but I was sending myself straight to hell when I traded off. Amen. Okay. So I had to make a conscious decision to say, no more trading off. Let me give you back your gifts because all gifts are good gifts. And if it's not coming from the Lord, then we shouldn't want it anyway. And so we find ourselves in situations like that. What I'll say is you have to, again, die daily to the flesh. You got to pray, pray even harder because you know, you know that you are individually you know that you really like this person's conversation. You know that you're attracted, you're mutually attracted to this individual. This individual may be attracted to you. And so you just gotta be praying and asking God to strengthen you because it's a, day, it's, it's, it's a daily task that we have to ask God to strengthen us where we're not compromising, where we're not getting in those situations and staying involved with some other positive things helps me along the way. Staying involved with ministry, staying involved with some sisters that are connected in ministry. That's what saves me. Staying involved in doing positive things. Spending time with my grandchildren saves, you know, saves some things. So yeah, okay. you know, you have to do find that fit that's going to fit you so you don't find yourself trading off. Okay, okay. I'm very proud of the fact that you're not just talking about it, you've experienced it and you're sharing to help someone what is satisfying you right now as a woman? Um, spending more quality time, you know, getting to know God, getting to study his characteristics and how Jesus is, getting to spend just that one-on-one -on -one time where I can hear the small voice, where I can spend time in my prayer closet, where I can hear from God, where I'm away from the business and I'm away from the noise, that's what's satisfying me, getting to know me, getting to spend some time with me, getting to heal from the past wounds. You know, I've watched some things rise and I thought I was healed from it, you know? And I say, Lord, I thought I was healed when he hurt me like that. But then you sit down and you, you, you spend that time with yourself and you realize I don't want to be a damaged good to my mm -hmm. husband. I want to be whole. I want to be healed. I want to be satisfied. And so just working and spending time with God and spending time with myself and loving on myself, which is something at one point I wasn't doing. Today, I can look in the mirror and say, girl, you bad. <laughs> and I don't even, you know, you bad, girl. What you going to do today? You bad, you know, and don't need that. You know, I appreciate the compliments, but I could compliment me. And so I've always taught my daughter that's in this house now, get dressed and compliment yourself and never settle. And so as, you know, as a mother, I never want her to make some of the mistakes that I made. I want her to do better. Amen. Okay. okay. So do you have any questions for me based upon being single and saved? I always I try to give people an opportunity. Come on. I do. Uh, how do you... How do you deal with knowing that you may be attracted to someone? And how do you deal with uh, being satisfied and not allowing the flesh to rise for yourself? Okay. When God healed a broken heart that I had decades ago, I realized that he could only touch some areas in me that money and women couldn't. And what has kept me from going back, if I ever was hurt like that again, or if I ever was trapped like that again without God, who's going to save me? 
because things look all right on the inside, outside, I mean, but on the inside, it was, I'm jacked up, I'm messed up. So that resolve that I don't want to put myself in that position again, because God had mercy and he had grace, but I was in a position. And when I was in that position, he was the only source to save me. And so I don't want to take that chance. And so that that's one thing I, I lean on. And as far as being satisfied, I love to help people. I love to share. I love to just see you and others be the best that you can. And what satisfies me the most is to see you walk out God's word in your everyday life. And when I see that, or when I see that in others, that gives me a joy that clubs, stuff, it didn't, it didn't even touch. And so that's how I'm satisfied now, being involved in the work of the Lord, not necessarily doing, not necessarily speaking, but just observing it in individuals like yourself. So oh, one other question. Um, what, uh, you know, we have, what are you looking for in, um, in your wife? <laughs> oh, okay. What am I looking for in my wife? <laughs> I desire and I a must is she has to have a relationship with Jesus. Okay. I want her to be very intuitive, meaning if I have to tell her everything, then that's not my wife. I prefer a woman that challenges me intellectually. I like a woman who knows her value. I'm going to esteem her. I'm going to do my part, but I need to know that when we're together, when she walks into the room, not just because I'm with her, but she has to know her value because when we separate and do the things that we do, I want to be able to look across the room and know that she knows who she is. She not only knows who she is, she knows her worth, not only to the father, but to me. So I need her to know that about herself. I like an active woman, <laughs> active in the sense of I like to have fun. My humor is a little bit dry, but I really need her to be fun and enthusiastic because I like to have fun, but a lot of times I can be misread like, you, you, you just so serious. I'm not so serious. It's just I like to think. And even though I like to think, I would love for my wife to be one who can make me smile, make me laugh. Okay. Okay. I'll share that much. Okay. All right. One more. Anything else? Uh -uh. Okay. Not that okay. You have an event coming up tomorrow evening. Right. Tomorrow, well, tomorrow morning, morning. Pardon? Tomorrow morning 11, 11 to 2. Okay. Yeah, it's called. Would you like to share anything about that event? Oh, yeah, most definitely. So uh, it's called Empowering Women. And so what we're bringing together is singles. We're bringing together those who may be dating. We're bringing together those who are married. We're bringing just a group of women together. We're going to talk real talk. We want them to understand we're going to talk about sex. We're going to talk about dating. We're going to talk about challenges that you have in a relationship. We're going to talk about love. We're going to talk about marriage. We're going to cover everything. And so I'll have an awesome um, panel. Some are single and some are married. Some have been divorced and are now single. And so we'll have just that mixture there. Uh, and we want the we want the we want the audience to ask any questions. I'm going to make sure that I specify to them. Yes, we are in a church setting, but we're doing real talk at the round table. And so we're going to talk. We're not going to hold nothing back. But the most important thing that I want women to understand is it's important that we embrace the season that God has us in right now. Right now, whatever their season is that God has them in, that I want them to embrace that. The second thing that I want them to understand is there's hope. 
in our hurdle. So whatever your hurdle is, whether you're in a relationship that you know isn't pleasing, this relationship, you just have troubles after troubles, Wherever your hurdle is, I don't know your hurdle. Your hurdle may be you're single and you're trying to still stay satisfied and whole. Whatever your hurdle is, there's hope in that. And so I want them to understand that everybody go through different things in even a relationship, in a marriage, but there's hope on the other side. And so I want them to be able to communicate effectively in the audience, to ask questions, you know, with their struggles, bring that. The last thing I want them to understand is None of us are perfect, but let's progress through our imperfection. Okay. Let's, let's progress in our imperfection. And so those are things that I want them to come being real about. Uh, I want them to, to talk, just to talk real talk. And so the panelists know that we're going to, we're going to open up, we're going to open up with, you know, with, uh, with a little, you know, we're going to pray. We're going to uh, uh, set the atmosphere, of course, because it's not our agenda, Minister Sean. It is all about giving God the glory and honor. But I want these women to come out. I want them to walk in that room one way, but leave out with a changed mind. Leave out knowing your worth. Leave out knowing you the king's daughter. Leave out knowing that you are a woman of value. Knowing you are a Proverbs 31 woman. Knowing that you're progressing, even if you're not feeling like that, but before you leave there on tomorrow, you will understand you are a Proverbs 31 woman. You are a kingdom woman. When I walk in the room, the enemy has got to go. That is what we want to portray to them. There's hope in it. So be encouraged. Know that embrace the season you in. You know, progress through your imperfection. None of us are perfect. We all got a testimony. You know, and so just wanting them to be free tomorrow, to share their testimonies, to share their struggles, to share whatever it is that they're dealing with, to come out and be free. Amen. Okay. okay. Repeat the time and the place where that's going to be held. So we are going to be at uh, 2004 Ontario Avenue. We will be at God Order My Steps Ministries in Baytown, Texas. Uh, it's Empowering Women. Um, we will be there. The times is from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. We will definitely have fellowship afterwards, and we look forward to the singles coming out. We look forward to the women that are struggling in their in their, in their relationship. We look forward to those who may have an inkling and want a date. We look forward to those that are in marriages that are maybe struggling in their marriage. We're looking forward to women to come out so we can educate, empower, and inspire one another. And so that is what we're going to do tomorrow. Any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I am Minister Trini Henry. I'm on Facebook. I'm not on Instagram, so I don't do a lot of that. Please reach out to me. You can um, you can always send me an email. I will forward my email to, I'll actually say it on here, which is thenry, the number one, period, htf at gmail.com. Please come out, bring your sisters out, bring your bring whoever out who you know that is struggling in a relationship. I just want to get some information, get some tips. We're going to be out there. We're going to be walking heavy tomorrow, and we're going to be having real talk at the round table, baby. So we look forward to sisters coming out. Amen. Amen. Well, I thank you for your time, and I look forward to another conversation after this event to find out what took place. Amen. Okay. Amen. And thank you again. You heard it up and you ready? Come on. I am, re I am ready. I am ready. I am excited about tomorrow. I know God is going to move in that place like never before. I know, sisters, I believe the Holy Spirit has already set the atmosphere for tomorrow. So I'm excited even how Pastor Beverly will be moving and operating, how the panelists will be moving and operating, and me as the mediator, how the women are going to come in there with joy, with joy, and we're going to bring more joy and more power into them. You know, iron sharpens iron. And so we're here just to encourage one another and sharpen one another out. So whatever tools that they need to put in their toolbox to take with them, we pray that they come out. They have their toolbox ready to get the equipment that they need to go out and live a prosperous and a successful life, whether you're single or whether you're married. Thank you, Minister Sean, for this opportunity. Thank you for, look, for trusting the God that is in me. Thank you for allowing me to be real. Amen. Okay. And I will talk to you later after the event. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Have an awesome day, okay?